Let's do one more word with Liz Sandals, who is the MPP for Guelph and the Minister of Education for the province of Ontario. I want to ask you about uh, what some are calling the totally dysfunctional Toronto District School Board, and to that end, read this quote to start with. Police were called to a recent meeting of Canada's largest school board amid accusations one trustee held the Director of Education hostage in her office in the latest example of headline-grabbing infighting. Quote, it is clear that we have no choice but to act, said Liz Sandals. Sandals said she has been observing the TDSB for a couple of decades and has seen the relationship and function of the board becoming progressively more dysfunctional and acrimonious. Let's pick that apart a little bit. Do you have any theories as to why this board has become so dysfunctional? It's interesting. The reason I'd said I'd been looking at it forever is obviously I used to have a life as a school trustee before I was an MPP. And um, when, when the Harris government amalgamated the school boards, and it did that all over the province, the board I was on went through amalgamation, but two boards came together and we worked it out. The Toronto District School Board went under a more dramatic restructuring than anybody else. It had, went from being a two-tier system uh, with one metro school board and six largely independent lower tier. Um, it lost the right to tax in an environment where a hundred percent of the funding came from local property taxes in Toronto, not most of the rest of the province, but so they were totally the uh, determinant of their own financial situation because they had the right to tax on a large tax base. Mm -hmm. And the, you took that and moved them to being 100 per percent dependent on the province and only one board. And they've, they've, they've never really come together well and functioned as a sing single unit. It's 15 years later though almost, right, that this happened? Well, yeah, this is 15 years. Yeah. And they've never really come together as a single unit. And they seem to have had more and more progressively acrimonious relationships. Hmm. At, the, at the beginning, it was struggling with the structure. It seems to have become more acrimonious. In terms of what have we done recently, I mean, at various times, they've been under supervision. But, you know, more recently... What does um, that mean, incidentally? Oh, supervision. supervision. Mm -hmm. A supervisor, and it's happened to boards other than Toronto District School Board, but uh, is given serious financial problems. The minister appoints a supervisor, and the supervisor runs the board for a while instead of the board. So they've had that get, a few times. They've had that happen. Uh, we had PricewaterhouseCooper do an audit of, uh, a few years ago. Then we had uh, a couple of advisors to help them implement PricewaterhouseCooper's recommendation. Then uh, there was a whole lot of allegations about whether or not the audit committee was getting the appropriate information. We appointed Ernst & Young to go in and have another look at them. And so in terms of um, interventions, we've done a lot of in for interventions to help them try and get their finance. What we've never this done... This isn't related to finance. Well, this it might, some of it is bit, because but... some of the accusations, in fact, mm -hmm. are related. I mean, if you get into the, uh, all the he said, she said around the director's contract, that's financial. It's oh, not a deficit, but right. it is financial. Well, um, but the... The pr we've never ever in Ontario used the section of the law of the Education Act that I have used this time. It's what you call the provincial interest regulation. And it's focused not just on the financial issues, but also governance issues and on the relationship between the board and the trustees. And that's what I've asked Margaret Wilson, my reviewer, mm -hmm to report back on. I've also asked uh, Margaret to suggest a structure for consulting on, is it really time to think about whether or not this is a board that needs to be restructured in some way? You are getting some advice from your opposition critics. The Conservatives say you should have appointed a supervisor this time rather than just a reviewer, which is what Ms. Wilson is. New Democrats are saying that, uh, as far as they can tell, 
uh, the biggest chunk of the board's problems at the moment is that staff slash administrators are not accepting of their role, which is basically to answer to the elected people, the elected trustees and the board. How hopeful are you that Margaret Wilson's actually going to give you uh, the recommendations that you need or the tools that you need to figure this all out? Well, and I, I suspect we're a long way from figuring it all out, but if I could go back and first the NDP, um, it's precisely because this is more complicated than just money that I use the provincial interest regulations. So in fact, I'm following the legal process associated with looking at governance. Okay, so mm -hmm. we are having a discussion about governance and supervision only has the effect of um, taking over the function of the board. It mm -hmm. actually legally doesn't have anything to do with the administration, although it obviously changes the relationship in that right. they're reporting to a supervisor. So that's not a good option for you this time. But at, at this point, well, may, and maybe it eventually will, but the other thing in terms of the Tory comment is in order the the conventional route to supervision is a deficit and they actually don't mm -hmm. have a deficit hmm. they may not be fin managing extremely well financially but they don't have a deficit so that means so you really the can't immediate put a supervision, supervision uh, uh, actually wasn't an option have you ever seen i mean you've been in education a long time i remember when you were chair of the public school boards association you've been a trustee mm -hmm. minister of education for a couple of years now you ever seen as dysfunctional a board as this one? Not over this period of time. Certainly, I, I said when we were doing the announcement of, of, of announcing Margaret's appointment, I said there were times when I was president of the Public School Boards Association that I felt a little bit like some sort of mother confessor. I'd get a call from a chair and they'd tell me about this dysfunctionality or this problem. And, you know, we'd have a little bit of a chat about how can you sort this out. And six months later, they would by and large have sorted it out. Hmm. What's different about Toronto is they've been sort of working on it for 15 years and it isn't sorted out. Now, given that we've got a new board, hopefully we can maybe do some sorting out. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah, new board uh, chair, Because we've new got trustees. a new chair, we've got 50% uh, of the trustees are new. So Margaret may say, you know, here are some things you can do to work with the board. If uh, she says the problems there are so systemic, even with half of the new board and even with a new chair, uh, my recommendation is you just get rid of trustees entirely. Is that something you'd entertain doing? No, because I think trustees have, a, have an important role in school board governance. Some people have suggested, why don't you just get rid of elected trustees and run it all from Queen's Park? And then I put my, on my I'm not from Toronto hat. And uh, school boards play a really important role in bringing a community view to education. Obviously, we set curriculum, we set the finances, we do a lot of things at Queen's Park. But the way it plays out on the ground in the local community is determined by the trustees. And that local color, that local view, that local lens on how do you deliver what the province says you should deliver is really, really important. Okay, last question. Uh, how much time have you given Margaret Wilson to do her work? And when do you expect to hear back from her? She is actually supposed to provide me with a report by the end of December. And I think right now she's probably cursing me. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that's tall, an awfully long, I think, I, I think what has happened is that the entire world now wants to talk to Margaret, so. Um, so you're going to slide the deadline a little bit? I, she actually hasn't asked me to do that, oh. but I just know that she's got a tremendous number of people who want to talk to her in great detail about mm -hmm one issue or another so she certainly has her work cut out for uh you know with reporting back so by end of month recommendations by the end of calendar 2014 yes okay good luck <laughs> support ontario's public television donate at tvo.org